Hey there folks, welcome back to Cambo Trout Fishing. On today's video, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive. It's going to be a seminar on slate summer and fall snakehead fishing. What to use, where to find them, a little bit of education on the species, and more. If you ever want me to come out and do a seminar at your location, hit me up here, you can book my socials, we can get it set up. Other than that, let's go ahead and get to it. We've got a lot of material to get through. Hit pause as you need to and come back to it. And other than that, any questions at the end, let me know. Let's get to it. Oh God, there's a fry ball right in front of me. There is a fry ball right in front of me. Got him. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh my God. Ah. That's got to be one of the most epic catches I've ever had in my life. And it's an absolute unit, y'all. Oh my God. Oh my God. This fish is enormous. I'm so glad I got this new net. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that was awesome. Now, if you're not familiar with me or it's the first time to the channel, my YouTube channel name is Campbell Chop Fishing. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, a few other places around here, on TikTok as well. And a little bit of background on myself. So I'm actually a Maryland native, but I joined the Army directly out of high school. That picture in the top left, that's up near the Korangal Valley in Afghanistan. I am a U.S. Army veteran, deployed several times around the world. You can see my family there in the bottom left, although I do need to get an updated picture because my children are, are all much larger than that right now. And I do a fishing club as well called the Legion of Anglers. You can find us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the video description. We hold cleanup events and tournaments throughout the year here in Maryland and the Delmarva area. Definitely check us out. And again, you can find links to all of that in the video description. Last thing here, thanks as always to my beautiful wife for giving me the time to indulge in my passion of fishing and passing all this information to you. So let's do a little bit of biology before we get into the fishing tactics. The native range for northern snakehead is Asia in countries like China, Korea, and Russia. They were first introduced here in the United States in the Maryland area in the very early 2000s. They now exist in every single tributary to the Chesapeake Bay through a combination of natural range expansion and man-made introduction. Their maximum length, finding fish in the low 30s is not uncommon. The longest ones that we've seen recorded photographically are in the high 30s. And I've heard rumors of those in the 40 inch range, but it's a very rare fish and I have not seen photographic evidence. As far as weight goes, well, there was actually a brand new world and state record set here in Maryland recently. And we'll get into that on a slide coming up. What do they eat? Honestly, snakehead are opportunistic feeders. From the studies they've done, by weight, their most common prey item is sunfish. By number, their most common prey item is killifish. They'll also eat crayfish, frogs, and other species. But again, they're opportunistic feeders. They're not specialized in eating any one thing. And lastly, the one thing I always like to highlight here is the difference in appearance between the non-native or invasive snakehead and the native bowfin. Because they look, especially to an unexperienced angler, they look very similar. But if you look, the best way to tell them apart, even though their coloration is often different, the best way to tell them apart is by the anal fin. If you look at that graphic in the bottom right, you'll see the anal fin on a bow fin is very short compared to the anal fin, which is extended on a northern snakehead. It's much longer. That's a surefire way to tell the difference between a northern snakehead and a native bow fin. All right, now I told you there was a new state and world record set for the world's biggest northern snakehead. And that was actually set by one of my friends, Mr. Damian Cook. That was a 36 inch, 21 pound snakehead. Massive, massive fish. You can see how thick it is right there. Absolute tank. And I gotta say, I'm very happy that it was Damian. He actually runs a guy service for snakehead called Lowland Outfitters. I'll leave a link to in the description. He's been somebody out there in the community who has been a real positive force and he's definitely put his time on the water. So much props to him. I'm only slightly jealous. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep trying to aim for that record, but congrats, brother. 
Now, this presentation right here is going to be geared towards Maryland, but this law generally applies in most states, and I'm going to explain why. But first, let's go through what the laws are as they exist on the books and get away from all the internet rumors out there. You can, despite a lot of the internet rumors out there, you are fully legally allowed to release a snakehead immediately after you catch it, so long as you release it back into the waters in which you caught it. You cannot release it into different waters. You can't move from a river across the street to a pond or anything like that. But if you catch the snakehead and want to release it, you are fully legally allowed to do that. And if that seems strange to you, I would ask you this. Is that more strange than the idea that the government can require you to kill something? Because that's the argument that has to be made if you're going to say that you have to be legally required to kill an animal, that the government can order you to do that. And I don't think that's ever really going to hold up. But regardless, the laws on the books in black and white, you can release that fish immediately after you catch it and only back into the waters in which you caught it. However, once it's in your possession, which means it goes on a stringer, in a cooler, or anything like that, that fish must be killed. It must be dead. And it's especially true if you're transporting. And there is a hefty fine if you get caught with live snakehead, especially if you're transporting them. So if you are in possession of that fish, if it's in your cooler, if it's on a stringer, make sure you kill it. And in order to kill a snakehead, my preferred method, because I do get asked this question a lot, is to first bludgeon the fish over the head because that subdues them. Because one thing a lot of folks don't know about snakehead, they can breathe atmospheric oxygen. So whereas a lot of fish, when they're out of the water, they begin to lose consciousness and become much more docile, snakehead don't do that. They can be an absolute handful out of the water, which is one reason I love the challenge of fishing for them. But getting back to the point, to dispatch a snakehead, bludgeon it over the head. One of the best tools you can have is something like a ball peen hammer. And then take a pair of kitchen shears or a very sharp knife and slice all the way through all of their gills. Just make sure you keep your fingers out of there because their gill rakers are very sharp. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is get into what are they actually doing in late summer, early fall, and late fall. So let's begin with late summer. What you're going to see, generally speaking, is the last push for spawning of the year. Based on the studies they've done so far, there appear to be two peaks in spawning. One in the May June time frame and one in the August September time frame. Now what I'm going to show you here is one of the favorite videos I've ever captured. And that's going to be the video of a snakehead guarding its fry ball. You'll see the young, when they're very young, are orange in color. And you'll see that this is one of the reasons that I admire these fish so much. The way they care for their offspring. So now that we've talked about what they're actually doing in the late summer, Next logical question is, okay, how do we find them? Well, some of the most productive areas I have found in the late summer are going to be your hydrilla mats, your reed lines, and your pad fields. Now, you can find them there in these areas all the time, but the best bites you'll find, if you're on tidal water, is definitely going to be during that moving tide. Reed lines in particular, I prefer an outgoing tide because it pulls them out of those reeds and has them either cruising that reed line or sticking their heads out of the edge of the reeds looking to ambush something. Check this one out. Giant, giant snakehead. Yes, good God. Stay hooked, stay hooked. Oh God, stay hooked. Please stay hooked. Holy crap, folks. Holy crap. Ah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Giant, you saved my day. Whew. I'm gonna break it down for you in a minute. But this absolute beast. Whew. She crushed that old school kicker frog. Oh man, what a fish. Oh God, what a fish. 
Now another area I love to find this time of year is going to be on your big high drilling mats. It depends on the area and according to what tide I want to fish. But a lot of times when you can find a hydrilla mat that has water on top of it, just three or four inches is all it takes, that can make for some dynamite fishing. Here's a great example. I just had one. Ooh! Okay, I made the right call. I made the right call to come back in here. Oh! Gotcha! Oh, I spooked one right next to me, too. This sounds like a monster, y'all. This sounds like an absolute unit. Oh my god, it is. Oh my god, it is. Holy crap, y'all. Please don't lose this fish. Please don't lose this fish. Please. He's too big for the net. Y'all, he's too big for the net. Oh, I got him. Oh, crap. He's off the, he's off the hook. He's off the hook. And he's an absolute tank. She will come in at 7.02 kilos. 7.02 kilos. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. So that covers where to find them in the late summer. Once you get into early and mid-fall, that's when you're just starting to have that vegetation begin to die off. So again, key on that heavy vegetation, find those grass mats and you will find the fish. Oh. Yes! <laughs> yes. Now in late fall, that's when the vegetation is really getting to be broken up and slowly dying off and going away. Still find that vegetation that exists, but it's during this time that you'll begin to find them, sometimes still shallow on the warmer days, but also on channel edges and a little bit of a drop off. But when they're up shallow, you can still get them on top water. Now point in fact, this video was actually from the first fish I caught on top water in spring but it's still a great case in point of the kind of structure you want to look for during those late fall times. Especially with this wind dying down. Yeah, that's crucial. Freaking crucial. Oh! Gotcha! There we go. There's first one on top for the year. Okay. Oh, get out of there. Get out of there. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. All right, folks. That was a long morning of no fish and no hits from Snakehead, but Skunk is out the boat, and that's the first fish on camera that you've ever seen on the new Poison Arrow Frogs from Infamous Fishing. Slurped it right up. Thank you, little beauty. Now, this next tactic right here is a brand new one for me this year. One I really haven't seen before, at least not to this degree. And that's to the extent that I've seen Snakehead eating Peanut Bunker. And not just eating Peanut Bunker, but eating Peanut Bunker in mass. Like I've seen them on bites lately on Hydrilla mats, eating Peanut Bunker. It almost looks like a fall striper blitz is how much they're hitting these fish. In this next clip, I'll break down the specifics of exactly what I'm talking about. One of the big things I found out here is that these fish, these Snakehead, weren't looking for a slow presentation. And I think that's because they were keying in on these Peanut Bunker because as I was catching these bass, these snakehead, eventually I got my GoPro 360 camera back up and running too with some good battery power. And I happened onto a bite I've never seen before. These snakehead were chasing down bunker like they were doing a striper blitz in the fall. And you'll see it, I capture some of it here on video. So I don't wanna belabor the point. Let's get to the action and you'll see just how wild this bite was as this incoming tide began to bring water back onto this grass mat that was previously locked up on low tide. Oh, oh, you missed it. Now, since we're talking specifically about late summer and into the fall season in terms of how to catch snakehead here, that's what I focused this slide on for how to catch them. In the late summer, topwater frogs and weedless swim baits, 
we this presentations in general are still going to be the name of the game because those thick patches of vegetation, be they pad fields, arrowheads, spatter dock, hydrilla, whatever it is, is still going to be around and it's still going to be thick in late summer. So that's going to be your weedless lures that you want to aim for there. As we transition into the fall, kind of the same story for the early fall. In the early fall, you still have a lot of thick vegetation. Make sure you have those weedless lures on you. And that's the same areas you'll be finding them as well. In the late fall, that's when the vegetation is going to start dying off. And that's when you want to start changing to subsurface presentations, chatterbaits, inline spinners. And as it gets really cold, that's when you're going to break that live bait back out if you're so inclined. I do. <laughs> Some purists out there definitely don't want to, but I certainly will. When it comes to the tackle to use out there, I generally recommend at least 30 to 50 pound braid. Now, that doesn't mean you can't land snakehead on ultralight gear. You definitely can. However, with a lot of lures out there with the bigger hooks, you need to have heavier line and heavier rod and reel to be able to get a good hook set and good penetration because snakehead have very hard mouths. When you set the hook on a snakehead, you want to give it all you got. Otherwise, your chances of landing that fish are not very good. But again, to reiterate, I like a medium heavy up to a heavy or even extra heavy rod, depending on what kind of structure I'm fishing. And that 30 to 50 pound braid, I recommend that because oftentimes you're not just reeling in the weight of the fish, you're reeling in 10 pounds of grass too. And you need that stuff to make sure that you're not going to break that big fish off when you really need to land them. Now I know this slide here is always kind of a crowd pleaser and favorite. The bottom line is that when you're choosing your lures for snakehead, conditions are going to dictate which ones you choose. When it comes to the early spring, you can see I have a variety of subsurface lures. And you'll see that a lot of them have some type of flash or vibration. You're trying to make sure you have enough attractive qualities for those snakehead to find your lures, especially in tannic or stained water. As we move into late spring, you'll see I'm starting to break out the topwater lures, buzz baits, topwater frogs, all that those kind of lures. But I also still use my subsurface lures like chatterbaits. Chatterbaits honestly are a great year-round lure, except for when you're fishing the heaviest of grass because they're just not going to make it through it very well. In the rain, I really like to use a buzzbait, especially in the light rain. And same thing for a chatterbait. When you have the rain making that additional noise on the surface of the water, you want to be able to make some extra noise so that those fish can find your lure. And you see all the way on the right, it's when it comes to that thick cover, have your weedless lure presentations. If nothing else works, I tell you, a weedless swim bait or swim frog will often be the ticket. Now, when it comes to snakehead fishing, I've done it for a long time, so I've learned from a lot of my mistakes. So one thing I like to do with my seminars is pass on some examples of bad habits and things you don't want to do on the water. And by using videos to get this point across, it really drives the point home as to why you don't want to make these mistakes. That's another height. High 20s, close to 30 inch fish. But that's a beautiful specimen. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> Watch here, son. Watch how close I'm fishing with this fish right here. <laughs> now, a lot of places in this pad field, you have a giant leaf and your frog will be behind it. And you can't even see if the snakehead grabs it. So sometimes you got to set the hook or at least reel down and see if you feel pressure. So I don't always count points against myself when I can't see the frog at all and I get a hit. But that one, the fish was right next to the kayak, right? Mm -hmm. Did I have an excuse on that one? No. No, I really didn't. Oh. You missed it. You missed it. I kept it in the strike zone. Ding. Yes. Now you know what the problem oh. was. I knew it. No. I knew it. Mm. Mine is too A weak hook set. Folks, that's one thing that you cannot even remotely stand to have out there is a weak hook set. All I did was kind of stand up and put pressure on that rod instead of reeling down and setting the hook. Yeah. <sighs> that's a 
like a competent fisherman, like a competent snakehead oh. fisherman. Competent. Today I was apparently cosplaying as an incompetent <laughs> snakehead fisherman man. Here we go. Ooh. Gotcha. Yes. Oh. What the? There you. What the? What the is going on here? Not. If you listen, help. All right, bud. Thank you for your sacrifice. Ah! There he goes. He got off. He got off. <laughs> you gotta open up. Ow, ow, ow. There we go. He shook it free mostly. Good. Give me the hook. There you go. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get out. Good God. <laughs> He's probably about to escape any minute now. Nope. Nope. <laughs> 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 All right, it's gonna be a, it's a dicey operation trying to get a picture when there's <laughs> when they're conscious, man. Especially a big girl. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there she went, dude. Nice. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's a nice fish, though. Yeah, that was a good one, dude. Now we spoke earlier. I showed the slide where we had the new steak record caught by Damian Cook. That fish was 36 inches, right around 21 pounds. The snakehead you're about to see in this video was 35 and a half inches. Check out the thickness on her. And when I tell you these fish are hard to handle, they're hard to handle. It's gonna haunt me for a long time that I never got a weight on this fish. You're about to see why. That is 35 and a half inches long. And look at the thickness. Look at that. She knocked my other rod in the water? Oh. I'm gonna have to get in the water. I got my rod back. Oh. Nope, not today. I got my KUN Black Ops back. <laughs> Madness like that is why we snakehead fish. So now that we've gone through and <laughs> saw the bad habits and some of the heartbreak out there with snakehead, I'm going to show you some of the good habits that you can use out there to help you hook more fish, land more fish, and just generally have a better time on the water. Let's get to those videos. He missed it. Didn't miss it that time, though. No. Did not miss it that time. Yeah. Ooh. <coughs> That's a decent one. That's a decent one right there. Whew. That's why when a snakehead hits and misses, you have to have that self-control to keep it in the strike zone. Gotcha. Yes. I saw her shark towards it, right at the boat, dropped it back in and got her. Yes. Number two. truly how many blow-ups I've had without catching a fish, but suffice it to say, it's a lot. So there she is, folks. One last look at her. Thank you for finally being one who actually got it in her mouth. Oh, that was glorious. She annihilated it. 
Get away from my babies. <laughs> now, a few more good habits to have out here. Watch your lure closely and finish your retreat. Slow down, be patient. Keep it in that strike zone, wait for it. And lastly, remember that the challenge of snakehead fishing is all part of the fun. Yes. Man, she hit her right at the boat. Please eat it. Oh, eat it. She won't pull the trigger. There he is, got her. Oh my God, another absolute giant. Oh, I can feel the teeth on it, that's not good. Oh my God. Holy crap. This is the most insane snakehead water I've ever fished in my life. Whew. Look at that. That's another 30 incher. That's a 10 pounder. Oh, she's still on. She's still on. I think. I think she's still on. Yep, she's still on. The now that she cuts through that line, which wouldn't surprise me because she is giant gaping mouth and big old teeth. There. Got her again. <laughs> I think. <laughs> It's a 12 pound fish. Look at the back on her. Folks, there's some fish you don't care about laying across your lap, you don't care about the slime, you don't care about none of that. And that is such a fish. And folks, the last point that I'm going to land on here is what I always land on for the last slide, and that's safety. So let's start with the snakehead itself. I've handled well over a thousand snakehead at this point. I don't know exactly how many. I've never had any snakehead try to do anything but escape. They're not out to attack you. However, keep your fingers out of the business end of a snakehead's mouth. Their jaws are extremely strong, they death roll like crocodiles, and their teeth are great for gripping and tearing. So on that note, make sure you have a good pair of long nose pliers. Infamous jaw cranks like these can make it a lot more safe to get your lures out of those fish's mouths. And aside from that, as we move into the colder months, look at getting a dry suit, stay dry out there, if you get wet, definitely get off the water in those colder months. And uh, probably above all else, make sure you're wearing that PFD. I see so many sad stories come across my newsfeed that are so preventable. Wear that PFD up there, y'all. But all right, I think that's it for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you really liked it and you wanna help me make more videos like this, I'll leave my PayPal information here in the video and in the video description. Any help is always appreciated. Alright y'all, thanks so much for watching, good luck on the water, and have a good one.